and origin. But in the game of golf, a sport with a long and hallowed list of immortals, it would be hard to find a beginning more brilliant than that of Tiger Woods. I have someone here to challenge you, okay? So right now, I'd like you to meet Tiger Woods and his father, Earl Woods. Famously introduced to the game before the age of two, he was from the very outset a clear prodigy, destined not just to make history, but make it just about as soon as he could. In 1991, in the world professional ranks, Greg Norman was the world's top player. Nick Faldo was coming off three major championship wins in two years. Played like a champion, one is all he will need. Payne Stewart's dream has come true. He's the 1991 U.S. Open champion. And 34-year-old Payne Stewart would win his first United States Open at Hazeltine National Golf Club in Minnesota. Meanwhile, at the U.S. Junior Amateur, a 15-year-old Tiger Woods was among the entrants in a championship that many say is as competitive and difficult to win as any other in the sport. With nearly 2,200 entries that year, Woods advanced to the final against Brad Zweski in a match that would prove to be the start of golf history. It went into sudden death, but when it was over, Tiger Woods was the youngest ever winner of the USGA Junior Amateur Championship. I wasn't necessarily intimidated, but we got to see how, you know, he got that fire. He wasn't quitting. He was going to knock down some shots, make some putts. It was on. The next year, 1992, only proved to be more of the same. As against Mark Wilson, an eventual five-time winner on the PGA Tour, Woods won his second straight junior amateur. He was like an icon, like a god almost. I shouldn't talk to him, right? I can tell my kids and grandkids about what it was like to play against Tiger Woods. The win made Woods the only player in the history of the USGA Junior Amateur to win the championship more than once. But he wasn't finished yet. As again in 1993, he took the trophy, this time defeating Ryan Armour. Already, it was undeniable. <laughs> Tiger Woods looked like he could become an all-time great. I think the biggest influence he's had in the last 15 years is the level of athlete that is gotten into golf. In 1994, at age 18, Tiger moved into the United States Amateur Championship, the oldest golf championship in the country, featuring the best amateur golfers in the world, with no age or gender restrictions on entry. Now it was about a new challenge and a legend to chase. The biggest name in the history of amateur golf, the immortal Bob Jones. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Jones won the U.S. Amateur five times and owned the best match play winning percentage in the championship's history. But now, Tiger Woods was chasing it. That year, he waged a classic match against Trip Keeney, with Keeney taking a six-hole advantage in the morning round. And then Wood storming back to pull off the greatest turnaround in the championship's 94-year history. All square. In a run highlighted by a memorable 15-foot putt on the 35th hole. Got it! Tiger Woods! It seemed like he was always able to, you know, to take it to the next level. And to me, that was his... You know, that's his true greatness. The next year, Woods was at it again. And against George Buddy Marucci in a memorable, grueling match that wasn't decided until the 36th hole. Tiger won the U.S. Amateur again. And Tiger Woods has closed out Buddy Marucci. I just don't think there'll ever be anybody at that level of greatness. We've seen the greatest players, but I don't think we'll ever see anybody at that level. Then came the 1996 Amateur, when Woods and Steve Scott faced off in a match that went 38 holes. One of the most dramatic finals in the history of the championship. Both golfers played tremendously that day, with Scott leading most of the way. 
But in a sudden death playoff, Tiger Woods came out on top again. Winning his third straight U.S. Amateur title. And moreover, dating back to the junior amateur, he had an unbelievable six championships in a row. Another Tiger comeback completed. And with it, golf history. The man flips the switch better than anybody. And so many people have asked me along the way, uh, you know, wow, wasn't he so lucky? Wasn't he, you know, I said, I said, partner, it's not, it's not luck if you do it six times in a row. He's the only player to ever win either championship three times in a row, let alone pull off this unique kind of six-peat. What does this do to your feelings as to whether you'll turn pro or stay in school? I don't know right now. <laughs> I just know one thing, I'm gonna celebrate like hell tonight. And in a remarkable career that's made him unquestionably one of the greatest golfers of all time, the six men he defeated will be forever linked in history by the defining moments they shared with Tiger Woods in his quest for the six peat. Woods may have made it seem easy, but each championship presented its own challenge starting with where he first tested his skills as a 15-year-old in the 1991 U.S. Junior Amateur. Most important, obviously, the juniors, by far, because um, there's an age limit. Uh, once you turn 18, you're, you're no longer a junior anymore. Um, you're out of it, so uh, there's a ceiling. So you have to get it done early and uh, to be able to win multiple, and then obviously to win, win three in a row was, uh, was more than you know, I, I thought I could do, but somehow pulled it off. The biggest influence on the career of Tiger Woods was always his father, Earl Woods, a former college baseball player who became captivated by the game of golf in his 40s. He introduced the game to his son and guided the young prodigy from there. Retiring from his job in 1988 so he could travel to Tiger's events as often as possible. Back in those days, we didn't really talk a whole lot, you know, before. It's just, you know, he knew I knew how to play match play. Um, just go out there and, and get up early. You know, it's treat every hole as this individual match. You have 18 individual matches. Um, treat it that way. And he just, you know, stood back and put on his headphones and but just, you know, watch me play. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of funny because I go out and then come back in and I would have to give him a sign of, hey, I'm, I'm two up or I'm, I'm one down or two down, whatever it is. And he did not, okay. He had no clue, you know. He was sitting under, underneath the tree somewhere, just listening to his jazz. He had always said, hey, why do I need to worry about hitting you hitting a golf shot when you're better than I am? So that was always comforting to hear. And I would go out there and, and try and do the best I possibly could. Even at a young age, Tiger's skills earned him the respect of his opponents. He was unrelenting at an early age, seeking perfection in a game that you cannot find perfection. Going from junior golf, taking it to that next level in amateur golf, then taking it to the next level in PGA tournaments, and then winning majors, definitely a legend. Just such a great long-range thinker. I mean, just, just the, the fact that he's just not, not thinking about tomorrow or next month, he's thinking about five, six, seven years down the road. You know, he played less tournaments than anybody and was always the leading money winner. Played less and was the best. He was mentally strong and physically strong. Some of the shots when I played with him out of some of the rough. I remember at Bay Hill on the 18th hole hitting it very close to him. And I just, I got 60 degree wedge, I'm chipping it out to the fairway. Whereas he's taking eight iron and going over the, all the water to the green and worrying about it flying. You know, I mean, I'm not worried about a flyer in this situation. He's a very unique, individual from his father breaking the color barrier in Big 8 baseball to being able to, you know, have the foresight, to have the, the mental coach, the swing coach, and I think to the relationships that he came with, you know, had with his corporate sponsors. Unparalleled. I just don't think there'll ever be anybody at that level of greatness when they're great. We've seen the greatest players, but I don't think we'll ever see anybody at that level. In a word, the way the young Woods played was remarkable. Got it! Tiger Woods! You know what he's done? Goes one up. And that was clear to anyone who matched up against him on the course. My first impressions of, of Tiger were, I, I knew he was the longest hitter in golf, in amateur golf. Uh, 
Uh, I knew I wasn't going to outdrive him that day. Tiger was just the, he just hit it forever. So I knew one good thing, I was going to hit first into the greens. <laughs> but, you know, he was the medalist that week, so I knew he was on his game. Obviously, you don't make it to the finals without being on your game. And, you know, I was attempting to stop history, you know, and, uh, you know, three U.S. amateurs in a row. I don't think anybody else is ever going to top that in, in our lifetimes. Right? right? What do you think? Right. We were fighting destiny, weren't we? All mm. of us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he did his one iron as far as my driver, mm -hmm. um, if not further. So I could still hit first in the green, but he's hitting one iron off mm -hmm. the tee. So I, I do remember the length that he hit. That was the first thing I, I saw. I had the same experience because um, I couldn't get my driver past his two iron. So, uh, and at Newport, of course, you had to hit the ball in the fairway. He didn't drive it more than two or three times, I think, in our match. But I still even though I drove it well, was hitting first. I thought that was a big advantage. For me, I always wanted to be, you know, trying to hit in there first. It didn't work, by the way, but I thought it was, at least I thought it was a good strategy. He had quite an entourage. You know, you go up to the tee and had Jay Bronza, his sports psychologist, uh, was caddying for him, and he was wonderful. He could not have been nicer to me uh, during the match. And then, of course, he had Butch Harmon, who was also out there giving him lessons on the tee, and uh, not to mention his father being out there, but. You know, there I am over in the corner, and I have my, my caddy that I've had since we were kids. We were friends, and over there he had his entire, entire stable. So it was kind of an interesting thing to see him walk down with his. At that point, you know, he's still only 19 years old and had the entire Jay, crew. Jay caddied when I played. Did he, did he caddy when you were? He was with me in the junior, too. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. How about you, yeah. So he had this you had not, experience. Not me. Not you? Really? Nope, nope. I noticed that walking down the, uh, the first fairway that morning, that final, and the whole thing is lined with people. and. And I said, he doesn't have a sports psychologist caddying for him. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I, I think my impression, first impression, was probably way different than, you know, all of you guys. I mean, my brother and sister were great friends with Tiger. Um, Earl and, and Tiger stayed at my house, you know, prior to as this kind of legend was, was growing. And I vividly remember this, as I used a lot of y'all's matches in mine, and my father was caddying for me. And our, our strategy completely going into the event or, or the final was, hey, he was a notoriously slow starter. He got off to a slow start, and all three of his, his junior wins, let's get out there and, and get off to a fast start. And, um, and we all got off to fast starts. We could just <laughs> never, never quite close the deal, but I was never... I didn't worry about the link, you know, the link with him. I wasn't intimidated him, uh, with him at all. I knew he was a, a great player, and um, you know, it's hard to believe that we're sitting around talking about arguably the greatest golfer of all time. It was an early Sunday morning in the summer of 1991 at the Bay Hill Club in Orlando, Florida. A teenage golfer was attempting to make history at the U.S. Junior Amateur Finals. The assembled media quickly grasped the stakes. He speaks softly and does in fact carry a big stick. This California teenager is 140 pounds and the ball flies off his club like a rocket from the pad at the Cape. My expectations are usually higher than everybody else's, so I may live up to everybody else's, but I might not live up to mine, and uh, I don't really like that. The 15-year-old Tiger Woods was playing against 16-year-old Brad Sweski. Woods struggled and fell behind at the start, but then made a move to get ahead. On the 18th hole, though, a bogey from Tiger left the score tied and the match headed to sudden death. I think I have a one-up lead playing 18. I put two balls in the water at Bay Hill, which is great, you know? Um, so then we go to the first hole, and I win the hole with bogey. Uh, to his double, and so that's how the, the first one came about. We're both choking our guts out. I believe I was four up through sixth, four under, and I was like, you know, here we go. Let's do this, and then I wasn't necessarily intimidated, but we got to see how, you know, he got that fire. He wasn't quitting. He was going to knock down some shots, make some putts, so he won eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So uh, after that, it was it was on. Uh, was there a, like a lucky point in the match? Like you said, man, this guy's the luckiest guy ever. I, I know there was something in, he was probably few in my match that, that happened, and sure, we could all kind of, well, I mean. He was probably saying that about me, but uh, <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with this kid? But uh, no, he, he had some shots um, that he could have sealed it on 16 or 17, and um, 
but he missed like a four footer on 17. I was taking my glove out of my pocket and the tee's out and I was ready to shake his hand and um, he missed a short one uh, on 17, but uh, yeah, they, he was able to close. And uh, also somehow they're able to, uh, to come out on top of that match, uh, but I was so nerve wracking to uh, be able to win that, 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 that event. The win was Wood's first major victory and made him the youngest winner of the U.S. Junior Amateur in history. Is there one shot that you would have back or you just, you know? Or... Yeah, it was on the first playoff hole. Mm -hmm. um, he, he hit it down to the right and I kind of hit it over, took it over the trees on the left. Right. And I had a shorter iron in and I just got it into this horrible mess over the back bunker. So he didn't have to close with a clutch birdie. Right. To, to close me out, um, I had to push a four-footer and a chunk it out of a bunker <laughs> to lose it. But nevertheless, you know, um, they had to get started somewhere, so. What was the most impressive shot that he hit against you? 16 mm -hmm. uh, at Bay Hill, which is a par five. Um, and I think we hit our drives about the same. And I was stuck behind a tree on the right, and I was thinking about cutting something out of the uh, out of the right rough there and see if I could get it over right. over to the green. And uh, so I walk up to the green and I'm just like, you know, okay, well, what's gonna happen here? And he throws it right at the stick, spins it back to about that far. You know, I'll, I'll give you that, Tiger. That's <laughs> good. Pick it up, I'm going to 17. So yeah, that, that was a shot. The 1991 win was a pivotal moment in Tiger Woods' young career but just the start of an incredible run. The next year, the junior amateur was held at the Wollaston Golf Club in Milton, Massachusetts, and Woods found himself battling for the title against Mark Wilson. I had plenty of holes to, to make it up, but I had to play really good golf, and I had to play mistake-free and, and, and just had to have a clean card coming in. I couldn't afford to, to drop a hole just couldn't make those type of mistakes. I had to play very clean golf. I was two up. Basically, it felt like the whole day. Right. Um, and then I, 14 tee, I was still two up. And then he, he won 14, 16, and 18. So it was kind of, I didn't have a stretch there, but, but I knew he was going to hang in there. He wasn't going to quit, you know? And a lot of the short putts he made, I think that sticks out in my mind. He made about a five footer on 17 that after I'd made one for par, and I'm thinking I'm going to the last hole one up. I'm like, he can't. He can't knock this in. All, you know, the expectations are all on him to get it done. I'm like, maybe he's going to falter. And now he just drains it one after another, those short putts. And so he wasn't wasting any shots. I think I was two down with four or five to go. And I remember making two birdies coming in. And we get to 18. And again, two guys choking their guts out. And it was who was going to make the least amount of mistakes on the last hole. And I believe I won that hole with a bogey as well. Woods' defeat of Wilson made him the first player to win a second U.S. Junior Amateur Championship in the 45-year history of the event. And the day wasn't just memorable for Woods. You didn't really see each other because you're kind of, first of all, you got to kind of meander around the people. There's no gallery ropes and stuff. And, but I do remember walking to the 18th tee. I had just made about a seven-footer for par. He made a four or five-footer. And it was like the only secluded place on the golf course that we got. It was just the two of us and our caddies went back there. And I remember walking up there. I hadn't really said a word to him all day. I guess I was kind of, he was like an icon, like a god almost. I shouldn't talk to him, right? And he was behind me and he just kind of said, hey, good putt back there. And so I said, oh, oh, you too, bud. You too. So I thought that was very, that was very nice. He, he understood the magnitude of it and, and he was, he loved the competition, I felt. And that's kind of what I felt from our, from our match. In the summer of 1993, at the Waverly Country Club in Portland, Oregon, Tiger Woods met Ryan Armour in the finals of the U.S. Junior Amateur Championship. The 17-year-old Woods was the two-time defending champion, but hungry for a third straight title. Now I'm two down with two to go. Um, 17, I hit a nice shot in there, stiff. I remember balls were plugging, and so that my ball plugged up next to the hole and I ended up making, making birdie there. And 18, I, I'll remember is I had a, a nervy putt um, from about six, seven feet 
to, to get into extra holes and I was able to make it. And you know, he, he made a bogey on going down one and I made par. He, I think I believe he hit over the back of the green and then get up and down. The match was hardly easy. Over the last few holes, any one mistake might have cost Woods a shot at the three peat. But he prevailed over Armour in 19 holes to win the championship yet again. There's this hole in Portland that goes along the Willamette River and, uh, you know, big pine trees there. And I have to hit like kind of a three wood out to the corner and a four iron on the green. Well, he just takes driver out and sends it over these huge evergreens out in the middle of the river and hooks it back into the fairway, going opposite <laughs> the dog leg. What a shot. Well, I got 185 yards and he's got 100. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. what's happening here? I mean, it wasn't, you know, but I mean, I played the hole to make four. I made four and he buries a 10 footer. And, you know, then we go to 18. He makes another birdie, a 50 yard up and down out of a fairway bunker. I mean, you don't do that down the stretch. I mean, that's he, amazing. He's that, two down and he's going to take on that shot. Right. You know, to think, you know, I if mean, I if block this, it's it, over. It's in the water. The, the, it's over. But no, he's not thinking that. He he's thinking, how am I going to make birdie? Right. Yeah. Were there a lot of people watching? Because I mean, at ours, there's like 2,000 people watching it. It was a new thing for me. Did that, you get well, a lot in Portland? I was, I was kind of familiar with that because of the year before when you lost to him mm -hmm. in the finals. But they doubled that in Portland. There was wow. about 5,000 people following the one match. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're a kid, you know, you've never done that before. And I remember kind of the the wave of emotions that hits you after it's done, and the one I remember is fatigue. I mean, I was just tired. Woods' win at Waverly in 1993 marked the end of his junior amateur career. It was now time to move on to a bigger target, the United States Amateur. This final match is between Mr. Tiger Woods of Cypress, California, and Mr. Trip Keeney of McKinney, Texas. An event dominated by future pros of all ages. Winning the Hallowed Championship would get Tiger Woods another step closer to generations of golfing greats. From Francis We Met to Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus, Phil Mickelson, and five time amateur winner Bob Jones, who clinched his first championship in 1924. None of that intimidated Tiger Woods, though. And in August of 1994, at TPC Sawgrass Stadium course in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, he faced off against Trip Keeney for the title. Now Woods, five down. This to win the hole, a birdie putt for Tiger. Got it! Woods and Keeney were friends, but that wasn't going to temper the competition. And the match was a struggle for Tiger throughout. Trip was just <laughs> kicking my butt after the first 18. I was down early on five. If I get to two or three through nine, it was, was the goal. And then I, could, I had a chance going to the back nine, but I had to get it to at least two or three. And then I ended up birding at 11 to get it to one down. And then finally, I pulled a rabbit out of my hat on 14. Hit on the right trees, and some kind of punch cut through the trees, ended up on the green, and ended up making a miracle par there. Poor drive at the par five. Second tried to play it, an heroic shot. Ended up in the fairway bunker well short of the screen. At one point, he was six down. No one had ever come back to win the event after being down that many holes. This is his fifth stroke. A wonderful par. But once again, Tiger Woods was the exception pulling off the greatest turnaround in the championship's 94-year history and becoming the youngest winner of the oldest golf championship in the United States. Tiger Woods is the youngest U.S. amateur champion ever. Could Tiger Woods become golf's next superstar? They'll take him. He's a likable young man, and what a performance here today. I'd hit a really good drive off number nine, and it was the turning point of our match because I hit a couple bad shots, but we're walking down the fairway, and, and uh, Dad and I are probably about 30 yards in front of uh, P&J, just enough where Dad was a little bit behind me but could hear it. And Tiger looked over, and Jay said, this guy's kicking my ass. I don't know how we're going to beat him. And then 16, um, the par five, we were down. We were uh, about a foot apart, barely in the right rough. And I hit it, and it, the, the long grass caught the edge of my club and threw it way to the left and kind of under that tree that's in the bunker. And Jerry Pate was announcing our match, and he said, Trip, if you're ever in the same place again, just lay up. 
So I was like, okay, I was out by foot, so I just laid it up down there where I have a nice little wedge, and I saw a tiger pull at like a three or four, and I kind of hit my dad like that. I said, maybe what Jerry Pate says is gonna come true. And he hits it, and it, it was exactly how Jerry Pate said it was gonna be. It was going, it's a big pull rope hook to the left, catches the tree, goes in the middle of the fairway 30 yards short of the green. And then kind of the rest is history. And I was so nervous of hitting off the little kind of a dirty lie, and I ended up knocking it down there. I ended up making birdie there to make the match go all square. And I got lucky as hell on 17, because I hit the, I had a wedge, and ironically enough, okay, I hit the wedge, look, it should have been in the water, and it hit the fringe, popped up, and it stayed. And I remember the putt um, breaking more than I thought. I missed it, you know, low, pretty significantly low. That putt, if you look at it, right before it comes onto the green, it hit something and it kicked it up the hill and went right in the middle of the hole. Got it! Tiger Woods! You know what he was doing? Guys, one Probably the toughest thing for me, you know, waiting in the match after it was over with was, you know, hugging my dad and, um, you know, out of respect for Earl and Tiger is letting them have their moment together on the, on the 18th green before I can, you know, say, hey, way to go, bud, you know, you played great. There's his father, Earl Woods. 20 years in the Army, did two Vietnam stents as a Green Beret, retired as a lieutenant colonel, once had a Vietnamese friend and colleague who his friends called Tiger, and he named his son in his honor. He has never seen his comrade since he left Vietnam, but how proud he would be of his namesake here today. In August of 1995, at Newport Country Club in Newport, Rhode Island, George Buddy Marucci became the latest to try and stop Tiger Woods. You know, I'm only a teenager. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm only a sophomore in college. I, I'm, you know, legally I can't do a lot of things. Um, it, I, I think that's the way it ought to be approached, and that's the way I'm approaching it. Uh, I'm not getting caught up in all the, the hoopla and you know, age, blah, 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 place in history. I'm just going out there and trying to do the things that I, I can do, which is uh, trying to get the ball in the hole. What ensued was a grueling, extraordinary 36-hole match. Tiger was a freshman at Stanford. Buddy was 43 years old. They battled to a near standstill, each playing with poise and elegance throughout. Right at it, Roger. It's in. It's not in. That'll turn the momentum around a little bit. Look at that smile, buddy. It won't hurt. Buddy and I, we had a, we had a great match. I mean, he chipped in on eight, par three coming down the hill. He was just putting it on me, uh, and I. I was waiting for him to make any kind of mistake. He was driving on a string right down the middle of the fairway. He doesn't carry it very far, but those fairways at, at Newport were running. Buddy just put it on me. He, he drove it great. His little, little pop stroke that he had. You know, he'd get down there, build a little stance, and pop it in there, and he was making everything. We had a huge crowd in Newport. We must have had 11,000, 12,000 people. I mean, it was, it was larger than anything I had seen, not to mention it had been larger than anything which I had played in. You know, I never played in front of anybody like that. The cordial, very cordial match. Tiger was very, very much a gentleman. But because of the distance difference, I never really got to see him. I saw him on the, on the teeing ground, and I would see him on the green, but I would never see him during the match because he would be so far up the fairway. So the demeanor was great, but we were kind of to ourselves. The match, we played really well, which was one of the things I was most proud of about the match. We both played well. We were under par in the morning, two or three under, and... Uh, I was 200 in the afternoon and Tiger was 400 in the afternoon and that's kind of the way it ended. Looks pretty good. Look at putt here. Somehow I ended up getting a lead um, going down 18 and, or end up having, being half going down 18 and I hit some kind of beautiful little cut seven iron in there. And um, I remember watching the telecast afterwards and Johnny Miller says I wouldn't be surprised if he hit it to a foot. And 
that. Of course, Johnny just blurts out stuff like that, but this time he blurted out and actually, I didn't hit to a foot, I hit inside of a foot. <laughs> so, uh, it was just one of those miracle thing, miracle shots. I never really worried about winning. I, I, I was worried about, could I play the golf course the way I played it all week? And I, and if it was good enough, it was gonna be good enough. And if it wasn't good enough, it wasn't gonna be good enough. But if I was worried about Tiger, there was no way I was gonna be able to, to play the match the way I wanted to play it. And as it turned out, I, I think I shot 136 or 135 or 136, which was about as well as I was gonna play ever. I think that was the thing that I was most proud of. But also the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, we really, we really got along well. It was a very interesting day because there were a lot of emotions going both ways. But, but I think the fact that the golf was played well and the match was played respectfully really meant the most to me. So that, I never really worried about winning. I was just worrying about playing as well as I could and just doing it the right way. After three straight USGA junior amateur wins, it was a second consecutive victory at the US Amateur. And Tiger Woods has closed out Buddy Marucci. Second straight. By now, Tiger Woods was indisputably the most dominating amateur since Jack Nicklaus. In August of 1996, at the Pumpkin Ridge Golf Club in North Plains, Oregon, 20-year-old Tiger Woods set his eyes on yet another championship. And his match against Steve Scott was yet another tremendous duel, this one stretching to 38 holes. Scott held the lead most of the morning. With many observers getting the sense, this might be the year Woods would finally be beat. Steve just flat out outplayed me in the morning. He just put it on me, and I made a couple mistakes. He capitalized on that and then forced me to make a few more, and then he, he played well on top of that. So huge margin again. I was five up after 18, and then he, he shaved off four strokes by, by the turn in the afternoon. Uh, so I'm one up going to the 28th hole of the match, and uh, kind of the, the, the flop shot to kind of turn things around. I hold the flop shot from off the green, and you know I jumped higher than uh, <laughs> than anyone my my stature might have should been able uh, to dunk. should jump. I, I might have been able to dunk. I might I almost fell down over on the side of the hill, and and then he turned it right back on the next hole. He buried a, a 35 or 40 footer that he easily could have three putted. the 34th hole of the match. Um, I was two up at the time. I hit it in the greenside bunker, and the best I could do was hit it about 10 feet from the hole. And he had spun a wedge back off the, off the hill at about six feet. Will it come back? Yes, it will. That ball was probably two or three inches from hanging up in the rough over the green, the heavy rough. His mark was in my line. I asked him to move it like he would on every, any Saturday match at the club. Steve asked me to move my mark on 16, and he had a, he had a birdie putt down there, and so did I. I had forgotten to move my coin back, and he said, hey, move your coin back. Out of true sportsmanship. I think that's the greatest thing about golf that, that just separates this sport mm -hmm. from any, any sport out there. You know, any sport you play, you know, you're, you're trying to get away with as much as you can. You're trying to, you know, they're gonna max that five fouls out. You're gonna get the yellow flag thrown at you, but. You know, in golf, you, we police ourselves. He could have just you know, kept his mouth shut and let me not move the coin back. Me hit from the wrong spot and him win the hole. Um, he was a great sport, and that's that was the beauty of golf, man. That's what, that's what golf's all about. How about that for sportsmanship in the heat of this championship battle? And this time, he's got it. And I, I think that's the... That's the, that's the greatest thing I learned from that match, and I've, you know, I've, made, I've got a lot of traction from that moment. You know, not, not winning, uh, but, but I, you know, I think we all won that day. We go down 17, 
remember my buddy Brian catting for me in, in, in the match play portion there, and um, I said, Brian, hey, it's just, it's five inches outside left. That's all it is. I don't, I don't care what speed I hit, it's gonna go in. He says, all right, knock it in. And, all right, so for some reason, normally you see like a, a line or you feel a line. It's probably the first and only time I've ever seen like a trough. Like literally like a, like a highlighted trough that no matter what I did, it was gonna go in. If I threw it five inches out and I hit it soft, five inches out and I hit it hard, it was going to go in. Don't ask me how I knew or how things work out that way sometimes in sports, but that's how that happened. And I happened to bury the putt. It's good. Great speed, it's oh, in. Wow. Are you serious? Tiger. Unbelievable, I tell you. I tell you, that's all I can say. It was just some surreal day. Um, you know, I mean, and maybe you all can agree with this. You know, when you when you play in, I mean, the tournament's about a week long. You know, with stroke play, match play, and once you get to that final match, you know, you're so locked in, so like on autopilot with your routine and everything. You hit shots, and you hit balls up in the air, it lands in green. You don't even really remember hitting the shot, and you look back and you say, "Wow, you know that." You know, you just kind of let the, all the practice, you know, come into play, and uh, and you you just you let it go. But uh, but no, we uh, we had a uh, you know. A very limited conversation that day. We let our golf clubs do the talking, and uh, it, it was some fight. I remember going down 18 thinking, boy, I'm pretty nervous right now. I'm just gonna go hit a high bombing cut, and I just smoked this thing down there. And got it down there, and Steve made a great birdie, got up and down, made a, made a birdie, and we went to extras, and um, I happened to get him on, on the second extra. Ultimately, Woods got the win on the second hole of a sudden death playoff. Going back to the juniors, it was the sixth consecutive year Woods had won a USGA title. At 20 years old, he'd done essentially everything he could as an amateur. The most compelling comparison to Tiger Woods' streak of dominance from 1991 to 1996 in the U.S. Junior Amateur and U.S. Amateur is the legendary Bob Jones, who made six amateur finals between 1924 and 1930, winning five times. But the competition Woods faced was much larger and much deeper. And furthermore, each of Tiger's victories featured comebacks to remember, epitomizing the mental strength that bolstered his incredible physical talents and revealing just how singular his focus on winning was. In that six-year stretch, he only lost two matches in USGA championships. Got it! Tiger Woods! A streak of dominance that was unprecedented and perhaps will never be seen again. I was so focused and so into beating who I was gonna, I had to beat um, to walk away with the trophy. And that, that I think that was the beauty of being in match play is that it, you, you know, you go out there and shoot a good score and you're, you're going home. Um, you had to play each match for what it is. You just had to beat one guy. And I figured after each qualifying, getting into match play, uh, I just had to beat six guys. Okay, just, it's not a 156 man field where I gotta be 155 other guys. It's not like that, I gotta be six guys, that's it, just six. But I gotta take care of one at a time. And that's what I focused on and didn't care who I played the next round because it didn't matter if I didn't get there. Still, the six beat was accomplished through six hard earned victories against six great players in their own right. I just know one thing, I'm gonna celebrate like hell tonight. So many people have asked me along the way, uh, you know, Wow, wasn't he so lucky? Wasn't he, you know, I said, I said, partner, it's not, it's not luck if you do it six times six in a row. To win 36 straight matches and, and USGA event from the, from the junior to the, through the US amateur is, you know, quite a astonishing feat, something that'll never be, never be duplicated, um, you know, I don't, I don't think, but, you know, just truly impressive golf and be able to, to come back in ways that, he came back, and not only in the matches that we had, but you know, in the 94 amateur, I mean, your head coach, Buddy Alexander, had him beat. Yes. 
and yeah. uh, then hit one in the water. And uh, just to have be able to have the intestinal fortitude and the mental toughness and be able to execute the shots when you have to or you're done. I mean, it's not like, hey, I can make a birdie and that guy makes a double bogey and I pick up three. You know, it was, well, that's just one hole. And to be able to, to, to come back and never have a guy you know, in, the, in one of the 36 hole matches, go out and make seven or eight birdies. And when that happened, he made nine. Or, you know, he, it, it seemed like he was always able to, you know, to take it to the next level. And to me, that was his, you know, that's his true greatness. And I guess the thing that's, that's the most shocking to me is here's a guy that's a 14 time major champion and zero come from behind. This is at it if it's the right distance. Will it come back? Yes, it will. I thought there, there were guys who were more physically gifted than me. They were taller, bigger, faster, hit the ball further, better drivers of the ball, better iron players, better putters, better chippers. But I always felt I had the mental edge. I felt everyone I played really well in, in those matches. Um, and basically, I forced my hand. Um, they, had, they had earned those leads. Uh, I made, made a few mistakes, but they also shot really good numbers, too. You know, you combine the two, and I'm down in every match. And so it's, as I said, don't count on them, you know, giving me anything coming down a stretch. I had to go out and earn it. Fortunately enough, I was able to make birdies at the right time and, and you know, turn things around. In the years since Woods' unparalleled run as an amateur, he, of course, has reached a level of greatness as a professional only a select few have come to know. With 14 major championships and an overall 79 wins on the PGA Tour, he's considered by some to be the greatest closer in history. But it all started when he was just 15, and the path to his legend began with the six peak. That will forever hold a distinct place in the history of golf.